We have grown accustomed to living with the defects of our body. The moment your heart stops beating, it's like falling asleep. But you, you, you step out to be with Christ, to depart from the flesh, and to be with Christ is far better. Right? Jesus has conquered death. Death holds no fear or terror for the believer. Even in the last days, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says this, God spoke to the angels and says, hurt not, notice this, hurt not the wine and the oil. All right, those days are the days of vengeance. Those are the days, we are, those days are not on us yet. In case you are wondering, this coronavirus is the days of the book of Revelation. No, we are not there yet. Jesus will come for us first. Amen. We'll all be transformed physically, amen. amen. Amen, we have a glorious body, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We all look young, strong, and uh, there's hope for you because turn to your neighbor and say, you'll be good looking then, hallelujah. There's hope for you. Amen. We'll all be forever young, forever strong, and never sick again. Praise God. For how long? For quite some time. Amen. For quite some time. And we'll be in that body forever. The Bible says God, when He comes again, He will change our vile bodies unto His glorious body. The Christian position is not a position of looking to the grave. It's waiting for His Son from heaven. The Apostle Paul in the book of Thessalonians says, we are waiting for His Son from heaven. Amen. And we do not know when He's going to come, but it looks like it's going to be soon. It looks like all the signs are showing. Amen. Jesus said that before He comes back, uh, nation will rise against nation. There'll be, there'll be wars. Now that has happened in our generation, or not our generation, not mine also, but we have seen World War I. Amen. At the turn of the last century. And then we have seen World War II. That's never happened before. Amen. World wars. And then we see the increase of, of uh, great earthquakes. J Jesus said great earthquakes, not, not small earthquakes. More than a, a 6.5 on the Richter scale. We see that happening now almost every month. Amen. And, and, and uh, plagues, pestilences in different places. These things are not from God. He's just telling you what's going to happen because the devil is so afraid at what is coming. He knows that the day of vengeance upon Him, amen, and also upon all those who reject Jesus Christ because, the, listen, the, the grave, uh, death and hell is something that God hates. God never meant for men to go there. In fact, God calls death an enemy. God told Adam, don't, don't eat of that fruit. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. See, God's heart is not for man to die, but God gave man a choice. You can say, well, why didn't God stop man from eating that fruit? Well, if God can stop man from eating that fruit, God can stop man from doing anything. Wherein then is the free choice that man, man was given by God? Amen. God gave man the free choice. God doesn't want a robot loving him. God wants a, a man to love him because he wants to love him. Amen. Amen. We, we, we choose to worship the Lord today because we want to worship Him. Amen. But imagine a robot... Pray, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. You know, you think God wants that? You want someone like that? I know that does that to come Korean dramas with robots love, falling in love and all that, but I'm talking about someone loving you, being married to someone who's a robot. Uh, Pastor Prince, I think I'm married to someone who's like a robot. <laughs> I'm talking about real, you know, so he gave us a free choice. Amen? Amen? Right now, you can stand up, like some of you are doing, and going, going to the kitchen to get your special drink. <laughs> No one can stop you, right? Amen? You have a choice. So God will always respect man's free choice. But you cannot change the result of your choice. If you choose rebellion, the result is death. You choose obedience, the, the result is life. So God told Adam, don't eat from the tree. So we all know the story. He, Adam gave up God. He gave God up. People say, you know, God gave Adam up for one, one fruit. No, God. Adam gave God up. Let's put it right. Amen? For one fruit. Amen. So death came in. Amen? That cannot be changed. So death is total. You know, the, the coronavirus thing, people are not so afraid of the, you know, it's, it's not so much of the virus itself. It is, they're afraid of death. Everybody is afraid of death. So the Christian posture is that death is behind us. Sin is behind us. Doesn't mean we are sinless. I'm, I'm saying that in God's perspective, Amen. All sins are forgiven. We are, when, when we died with Christ, we were crucified with Christ. We were buried with Christ. 
That's the end of our sinful nature. We were crucified at the, at the cross. So to faith, not to experience, but to faith, it is a done deal. But to experience, we still experience, you know, like tra traits of a sinful nature, but we, we got to walk in, in faith. We got to walk by faith and not by experience, not by sight. And there are times, perhaps some of you, you feel like, you know, God is so far away. What is that? A feeling. You're not to walk by sight, by sense, by taste, by smell. You are to walk by faith. Yes. The Pastor Prince, sometimes I won't feel like God loves me. You know what? He does. And He doesn't just love you. He loves you even as He loves Jesus. John 17. Very clear. I, I, I can't fathom that still. It's wonderful that God loves me and I believe He loves me very much. But to love me the way He loves Jesus, Wow, that's amazing. Amen. The same Jesus that when He came out of the rivers of Jordan, the Bible says that, that God opened the heavens to Him and said, You are my beloved Son. In You I'm well pleased. That same Jesus, God loves Him. With that love, with the same love, God loves me. Amen. Doesn't love me any less. Doesn't love you any less. Praise the Lord. He loves you even as He loves Jesus. Amen. And God gave Jesus up. Amen? You know, we love our children, but I think none of us will give our children up for a criminal, for someone who, who is against you, who, you know, who, is, who, is, who is really evil towards you even. But God sent His Son, to, not to die for friends even, but to die for His enemies. Because all sinners rebel against God. We became His enemies. Not that He made us His enemies. We made ourselves His enemies. And He sent His Son to die for us. His Son said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And that's why worship is just reminding the Father of Jesus. It's bringing, you know, this, uh, everything about Jesus, every, mor every moral feature, every moral glory, all His moral excellence exudes a fragrance to the Father. When He walked on earth, every thought, every word, every deed, it's like a fragrance. It's like frankincense going up to heaven. And that's why God says, bring the meal offering, the fine flour. It's so fine. And this fine flour, by the way, is not something that you sift to get the fine flour. Many a times, to get fine flour, you have to sift it. But there's a quality of flour that is already fine. It's very rare. The Lord didn't have to be sifted like you and I. We have to be sifted. He is fine flour. Amen? There's no characteristic in Him that is disproportionate. Uh, not one moral feature uh, outweighs another. Everything is in per perfect proportion. Amen? When you put your fingers through fine flour, it's, it just runs through your fingers. It's so fine flour. It's all together lovely. And then the Bible says in this meal offering, put oil on it. Don't forget, he and in this oil, in this meal offering, there are two things they do with it. They mingle it with oil. Mingle. And then they anointed with oil. After they bake it, they anointed with oil. Notice Jesus was mingled. He was conceived in the Holy Spirit in a virgin's womb. And then at the age of 30, when he came out of the rivers of Jordan, he was anointed with oil. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, God says, every time you bring the burnt offering, bring also the meal offering, the flower offering. And the flower offering reminds you of Jesus. And there's something else they do on the flour, besides putting oil on it, they put frankincense on it. So that every, every thought of Jesus, every word that He spoke when He was unearthed, exudes a fragrance of rest to the Father. No one pleased the Father the way Jesus did. And God gave Him up for you. That's how much God loves you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Exciting, amen? Now, it's all about Jesus, people. It's all about Jesus. So we look at what is happening in the world today, in the first part of the world. It's like God is bringing us to the uh, first floor and He's opening up the first floor and says, not to worry, the grain, there's plenty of grain, wine, and oil. Yes. There's plenty of grain, wine, and oil. So if you feel that you're not, you're, not, you're not well, whether it's from the virus or not, doesn't really matter. Go get the grain, the wine, and partake of it. Yes. Amen. Amen. There's only one statement in the, in, in the entire Psalms about Melchizedek. In fact, Melchizedek appears one time in Genesis 14 and then one time in Psalms 110. But in Hebrews 7, God has a whole chapter about him and God is saying, Melchizedek, 
is the priesthood of my son. Amen. It's a priesthood that never ceases. In the priesthood of Levi, the Levitical priesthood that, brought, that came with the law, that, that, that priesthood blesses you. Amen. You are blessed. It says when you're under the priesthood, you are blessed when you obey, but you are cursed when you don't. But the priesthood of Melchizedek, what came out of Melchizedek's mouth when he brought the bread and wine to Abraham was this, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, and blessed be the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. No curse, just blessing. And that's the priesthood of our Lord Jesus Christ today. Can I have a good amen? Hallelujah. And what did Melchizedek bring? In that one moment when he appeared, and he's a picture of our, our Lord's priesthood today, he brought bread and wine. And, res and, and the response of, of uh, uh, Abraham was the tithe. So the tithe was way before the law. Amen? You don't have to tithe. The tithe is something that is a revelation that when you have it, you want to tithe. Amen. Amen. The tithe is nothing more than saying, I know you. You are the source of my victory over my enemies. You are the source of all my supply. Amen. And the grain and the wine, and the Lord says, for the lack of discerning the bread, amen, for the lack of discerning that, many in the church are weak and sick and they die prematurely. They fall asleep. You see, for the Christian, the Bible doesn't say you die. Even if, if uh, your heart stops beating before Jesus comes back, amen, the Bible used the word for the believer. He falls asleep. It's just like falling asleep and you wake up. In fact, your heart stopped beating Right now, if my heart stops beating, God forbid, it won't happen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. With long life, God satisfies me. But for illustration, if my heart stops beating right now, it drops right here, I'll never be more alive. In fact, I feel so free because the, this, this attractive body here, is is, no matter how, it is, still, it is still restrictive. It still holds you back. Amen. Amen. You, we, we, don't, we, we have grown accustomed to living with the defects of our body. We don't realize uh, when, when you, when, when the moment your heart stops beating, it's like falling asleep, but you, you, you step out. To be with Christ, to depart from the flesh, and to be with Christ is far better, Amen. right? But meanwhile, Paul says, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you, so don't take off just yet. <laughs> Amen, don't take off just yet. But Jesus has conquered death. Death holds no fear or terror for the believer. Can I have a good amen? So he's opening up the grain, the wine, and the oil to all of us. And who would have thought in the year of time and space that time all over the world is not just in our church. The theme of the year, it seems it's not just for our church. It's for the entire world. When time is now so restricted, time is now so constrained. Am I right? People are feeling time is so slow. Uh, they want this coronavirus thing to be over. And, and, and many people who are workaholics right now, especially they are suffering. They have, I mean, they are some, some of them don't know what to do at home because they are, they are such workaholics. You know, they, they need to do something. And when they are quarantined, whoa, that is suffering. <laughs> Amen. It is like time is moving so slow all over the world. If only they can accelerate time to the end of this coronavirus thing. Right? What about space? Space is definitely restricted. You can't just freely travel anywhere anymore. <laughs> Can you? No. What is happening? Both time and space are being constrained as far as the world is concerned. But the Lord has spoken to us and said, He is the Lord of time and space. Yeah. Amen. And we have seen the Lord accelerate time we have seen the Lord at time. We have seen the Lord remove time. Amen. Sometimes some, some days are like, like so long and some days are so fast and you can tell the Lord. And you know, Lord just gave me, for this day, Lord, lengthen the day. And He can do it. He can do it. The Bible says that uh, the blessings of God includes length of days and long life in the book of Proverbs. And in the same verse, it says length of days and long life. So obviously long life means you live long, yes. But what about length of days? That means your days are long. When, when you have a good day, you want it to last long. When you have a bad day, you want to get it over with. <laughs> so we see time and space being affected. But we, don't, we are not people of the world. We are not people of the world. 
we have the Lord of time and space. And in His first two miracles, the Lord turned water into wine. Now, for you to get wine, how long does it take? When I was in Israel, I, I found out. It's, it confirmed what I, I have been preaching for years. There's a man there that owns a vineyard, and he confirmed it takes about three years to get a, a good fruit out of the vineyard. Amen? You might have some earlier, but to get good fruit, you got to have three to four years. Then after that, you can produce wine, but it won't be quality wine. It won't be good wine. You got to wait for another two to three years again to get good wine. But to get excellent wine, you got to, after the wine is, is manufactured and all that, you got to keep that wine. You see people keep it in the cellar, right? And the, the longer the wine matures, the better it is. You have excellent wine. And what happened at the wedding was that they ran out of wine. And uh, it's, it's an embarrassing thing for uh, Jewish families, right? in Bible times especially, even now also, but, but especially when the wine runs out, because wine is a symbol of joy in Bible times. So it ran out. It's like their joy ran out on their wedding day. And of course, Jesus turned the water into wine, about 20 to 30 gallons. He didn't have to turn 20 to 30 gallons into wine. And, and the master of ceremony said this, told the man, the groom, you know, most people serve wine, the good wine first. And then when people are drunk, they can drink anything. Not even wine, they will drink it, right? <laughs> because they are drunk. But you have kept the best wine, even until now. Amen? So the Lord, what the Lord did was that He took something that will take what? Seven years? Eight years? Ten years to get good wine? Twenty years? The longer the better? Amen? And He constrained it into one fell swoop because He's the Lord of time. Amen. Can I have a good amen? amen? What about space? The next miracle, the Bible tells us this is the first miracle. He turned water into wine, showing that He's the Lord of time. Amen? And He has the times of your life in His hands. Amen. Amen? You can talk to Him. You can tell Him to accelerate time for you. Amen. And uh, to, to facilitate time for you, to add time in your life. He is the Lord of time because He lives outside time. God is not within time. God created time. That's why the cross is outside time. He died for all those before and He died for all those in the future. Amen. Because as far as God is concerned, it's as if Jesus just died. And one of the ways we take communion is always to take it fresh. When we come to the Lord, we take it as if He just died just now. Amen. One of the principles of uh, receiving the, the peace offering, the Bible says, don't let it last more than three days. Stay close to the sacrifice. Amen. Keep it fresh. So most people think like, like He died 2,000 years ago. No, no, no. As far as God's concerned, He died just now. Outside time. Take it fresh. I always like to tell him, Lord, I'm receiving these elements fresh from your hands. I'm receiving them as from your hands. It's fresh. And when I say by your stripes, it's just as if he took the, the, the scourging just now. Amen. Amen. Do it in that way because he's the Lord of time. Amen. The next miracle space was when he was back in Cana, the same place where he turned the water into wine. And uh, a man came to him and said, his son is sick, a noble man. And Jesus says, go your way, your son lives. Now, from Cana, where Jesus was, and the father came to Jesus in Cana, the son was in Capernaum. That's about 40 over kilometers, about 25 miles. So when Jesus says, go your way, your son lives, we know that the man spent the night in Cana. That shows faith. He didn't have to go back immediately. He stayed overnight. Because why? The Lord has spoken. Friends, the Lord has spoken to us. He says, Psalms 91, surely, not maybe, not perhaps, surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. This is definitely a perilous, a dangerous pestilence, right? Surely He shall deliver you. Not maybe, surely. Amen. In fact, of all the verses in Psalms 91, that's the one He punctuates, He starts off with, surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Let's rest in that. God's supply is unlimited. Amen. We limit the Holy One of Israel. Amen. That's why Jesus says, Oh, you of little faith. You know, He never says, Oh, you of little fasting. He never says things like, Oh, you of little prayer. Although these things are important. 
He says, O you of little faith. Why? Because faith is the hand that takes. Faith is the hand that takes. It's almost as if he's saying, O you of little faith. It's like, why do you take so little from me when I'm so full? Why do you depend on me so little when I'm so able to? Why do you depend on your lim limited resources when I have an inexhaustible supply? And I love you. Oh, you have little faith. Why do you take so little? Even his indictments are encouragements. Isn't the Lord beautiful? Amen.